Hey guys, what's the mine detective here coming at you with another miners cabin and mine exploring video. So on today's episode, we're out here hiking and uh, from where I parked the car, I've already done four miles to get into the mouth of this canyon. And uh, right now we're on this pretty rutted dirt road. Obviously, it has been pretty washed out. Um, even if I brought the Jeep out here, which I didn't, I uh, don't think it would have made it to this point. I did not see any tire tracks going past like a mile or two on this road. And I've got at least another three miles to get to the mine that I'm trying to go to. But uh, hopefully able to get there with enough sunlight right now. It's almost nine in the morning. So I'm pretty confident that I'll have enough time to check out stuff today. And then I'll be camping up there tonight and hopefully show some more stuff in the morning. But uh, I brought along the drone, so definitely excited to get some sick drone shots, especially of the cabin. And uh, yeah, I'll turn you guys back on when uh, I find some cool stuff. I bet there's some uh, cool metal artifacts in this wash. So here's the first signs of human activity that I found up this canyon. This almost looks to me like a trailer. I wouldn't think that this is a vehicle considering how narrow it is. It's only about maybe, maybe three feet wide. But it's still got the axle and the wheels still got the uh, rubber on it. But it's very buried under the dirt so I'm sure that this thing's probably been sitting here a few decades at least. There's one of the leaf springs. Yeah, very interesting. Hmm. There's more pieces of metal up there. But we're still continuing up this uh, canyon. Probably went maybe not even a mile since I first dropped down into it. All right, yet another sign of human activity up this canyon. We got a part of a car door. Here's the handle, doesn't move anymore. I'm guessing this is for rolling the window up and down. Still got the gear mechanism for that. Yeah, that's a pretty cool find right there. I'm guessing dating to right around the 1940s or 1950s. All right guys, getting further up the canyon and as you can see, it is quickly beginning to narrow. It went from about 200 feet wide to only about 15, 20 feet wide. It's awesome how these walls are towering over me like that. But since I got the time right now, I figured I'd give you guys a brief history on the mine and the prospector that worked it. So this mine was discovered right around the turn of the century, either late 1890s or right at the verge of 1900. And uh, it was worked from the period of right around the turn of the century all the way to his death in 1919. And uh, he was a Frenchman and he was quite the prospector, one of the uh, one of the most successful ones out here. And this was his main mine. He had uh, quite a few that he found and worked over the years. But uh, he worked this one for about two decades up until his death. And the thing that separated uh, this man the most from pretty much all the other uh, jackass prospectors out here was that he was well educated and that's really not saying much especially today but back then that was uh that was quite the property to have 
Um, and also, he was really well liked by his counterparts. So uh, when he died back in 1919, his buddies uh, found him and then buried him under a mesquite tree along with his burrows, which also died with him. Just look at that strata right there. That's awesome. But uh, yeah, and after his death, I believe that there, there were two other also prominent uh, prospectors that came up here and worked this mine back in the 1920s. And it was worked intermittently up until the 1950s. So the, the newer cabin that's up here, which is bigger, uh, it was actually built back in the 1950s. And you could actually drive up here up until the 1970s or 80s. But as you can see now, it is super washed. Like I said, you can only get up not even two miles up the road. But uh, yeah, pretty cool history on this mine. And uh, a legacy for the man that worked it. Well, this is a pretty cool find. Not sure if this tarantula is dead or if it's just very cold because last night it got into the probably 30s up here. Yeah. Yeah, that's a cool find. I bet there's definitely more of those to be found up here. Nice. Yeah, still continuing. Oh, talking about that. <laughs> There's another one. That one's upside down and definitely dead. But yeah, still continuing up here. This is uh, definitely a more narrow section. Super scenic. Alright, let's continue on. All right, so here's even more pieces off of a mangled car. Some older cans right next to it. Well, I'd imagine even back in the day, this road was not nice to vehicles, considering I just passed dry rock waterfalls. Yeah, pretty interesting. All right, we're definitely getting up there in elevation. That triangular peak right in front of me, I believe that's a 7,000 footer. Ooh. This is one hell of a hike. Definitely recommended for winter. Right now it's probably gotta be in the maybe upper 40s, maybe in the 50s. Decently cold, but this is just amazing weather to be hiking in. Making really good time right now. Hope to be up to the mine and cabin within an hour. Alright, so I've been hiking up for a good while. But right over here, there's signs that we're getting very close to our destination. Let's go uh, check out this mine really quick. I'm guessing that it's probably just a, a little prospect, but I always gotta check them. There it is. Can't really see if it goes in all the way or not. Yeah, it looks like it goes in about maybe 10 feet. And then ends. Well, there's a couple cans right here in the entrance. But yeah, that just faces right there. Um, we are getting very close to our destination, probably within, I would guess, maybe half a mile. So I'll turn you guys on when we get to the cabin.
All right, we got yet another pile, and it looks like there's still a portal. Looks like it's semi filled in, but we could probably get in there. Probably just another small prospect. Yep. Goes in about eight feet and it ends. Always worth checking them. Never know what you're gonna find. Alright guys, we finally made it to the cabins. Obviously the one on the right is the older one. That one was built in the early 1900s. And then the other one was probably built sometime around the 1950s. So the hike up here uh, was a bit more extensive than I was first thinking from the road. I hiked about eight miles to this point and then the mines are right up there. So I'll probably put on a good 17, 18 miles round trip. So but man, look at this, super worth it to come up here just to see all this awesome history. So looks like he used old tin metal as insulation as well as stacked rocks as the foundation. A lot of cool little artifacts here. You got a couple shoes, some other odds and ends. Looks like a door hinge. Let's take a quick look inside. Looks like there would have been a probably a stove right here, considering that there's a hole in the roof. Yeah. What a place to live back in the early 1900s. So there's a little pail. But yeah, definitely not going to sleep here tonight. Planning to sleep in this uh, bigger cabin. I'm sure it's got some uh, old bed frames I could lay on. Yeah, still got the old school door handle. Alright, let's see. It's uh, pretty cold in here considering that there's no glass on the windows. Also, there's this big chunk missing. Imagine living here back in the day. Just amazing. So yeah, there are definitely some, uh, there's three bed frames. I'll probably sleep on that one. That one looks the most sturdy. There's another door right there. Got an old oven. There's a log all right in that. And over here, you got the sink. Got an old California pomegranates produce box. A couple of books, looks like. I have to scroll through those tonight. Not sure what that piece is. Yeah, there's just a lot of a lot of stuff up here. And then I noticed in the corner over here, there's actually a hatchet, so I guess if I need to break down any wood, boom. That's decently old. I mean I still got the handle. Probably, probably been up here a good 30, 40 years. But yeah, pretty, pretty cool cabin. Kind of sucks the condition it's in. It's pretty uh, deteriorated. 
I've seen pictures of it from the 1970s and it looks way better than it does now. Yeah. Look at that old shell grease can or grease bucket. Oh uh, yeah, definitely planning to have a fire in this thing. The flue doesn't go all the way to the roof, but that doesn't really matter because there's decent airflow through here. But yeah, let's uh, head outside and uh, we'll go check out the mines with what remaining light we have. All right, so there's a really awesome shot of the cabin from right here. And I uh, just took some drone shots. I'll show you guys that in a minute. But uh, we're gonna be headed up to the mines. You can actually see a couple of the piles up there. They're kind of orangish in color. But yeah, super excited to see what's up here. Alright, so I'm going to start going uphill right here. There's a few pretty decent sized piles up there. As well as looks like a 55 gallon drum. So, hoping there's some open holes up there. Yeah, there's that big old drum. Alright guys, so we made it to the top of this pile and uh, it's pretty substantial, so hopefully there's some pretty good workings right here. Oh yeah, you can already see big portal right there. Oh wow. So I'd have to guess that this adit right here was either widened after the fact, or it was uh, open like this in the 1950s, because this thing is huge. So, let's turn on the light. Let's head in here. Wow. Definitely a tall one. Who knows how far back this thing goes. Huh. I was not expecting mine this big. Especially way the hell out of here. But sometimes you get surprised. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing some of the older workings that were done in the early 1900s. I'm sure it's pretty cool. Right, so there's a truth that goes off to the right. And that looks like it continues. So let's use the right hand rule. This might actually connect back to where we were. Oh no. Definitely goes right. And big old door right here. Next to the other drift. Yeah, 
This thing's extensive. Got some cardboard boxes right there. Like that one faces out. All right, let's go on to one of those uh, drifts that headed off to the left. All right, so here's the one with boxes that we've seen. So straight ahead of me faces. Even I'm guessing that this does as well. I thought I seen like something moving. Yeah, so that just faces. So let's go on to that main left hand drift. So now we're on that main left hand drift. That's where I just came from. That just faces. And let's see if this one continues. Yeah, so that one also faces. Yeah, so pretty big pile, not because it's like a really long mine, but because of how wide and tall it is. So let's head to one of the other dozen or so mines on this hillside. All right, so this is what I'm hiking up right now. To the top of the pile. There's at least two decent sized piles up here, so hopefully there's an adit or two we could uh, check out. Oh man, I'm out of breath. All right, so I got to the top of the pile. It is a pretty decent sized one, so hopefully the mine goes in. There's the mine right there. We'll go check out whatever this is. So this is definitely some older workings. So we got some remnants of these stacked stones. There's just a bunch of metal here, so I'm wondering if this would have been like part of a blacksmith forge or something. That's my guess. And got these two big wooden beams. Yeah, my guess is Blacksmith Forge right here. And definitely looks like there's pieces of like charcoal and shit in here, so that would make sense. Huh. Cool stuff. But right, let's go head into this mine real quick, see if there's anything to see. Oh wow, I do actually see some stuff. Including, looks like part of the dynamite box. Oh yeah, look at all that stuff. Some interesting metal here. This almost looks like a damper off of like a... You put these on the stove, I believe. And it'd have a turn... Turn thingy right here. Huh. Very interesting. And then here's a dynamite box. Let's see if we could get some writing off of it. I can definitely see... Right there in that left corner, 50 pounds. And it looks like it's a Hercules gelatin. That's pretty much all I can read. Let's see if any of these side pieces. I definitely see a, a ULES off of Hercules. Yeah, it's pretty much 
falling apart. Let's not mess with it too much. Yeah, go cool flying right there. And let's continue down. See if there's anything else. Oh yeah, it does continue. Feels feels a lot warmer in this section. So I don't know if faces soon. Getting pretty narrow here. There's another can. Can inside of the can. Yeah, you can definitely tell that one man was working this. Because this is pretty small. Oh my gosh. Kind of crouching down right here. Stands right there. Yep. All right, so let's uh, go back outside and uh, see if there's any more mines of interest. All right, so I hiked just a little bit higher above that other adit and Got some more stacked stone walls right here. And yet another mine. Don't know how big it is. Whoa! Oh. Yo, look at that. Intact bottle. Let's see if there's a seam on there. Yeah, so the seam goes all the way to the top. So this is definitely machine made. But it's early machine made. Because they got these machine made bubbles and the bottom is really crude. You can see how uneven it is. This thing probably dates to right around 1915, 1920. Oh, that's epic. Leave that right there. <laughs> that's sick. But yeah, look at how narrow that added is. Let's see. Ooh, it's windy. Ends. Either ends or collapses. Uh, yep. Faces out right there and pops up to the surface right there. But it looks like there's another another adder over there, so we'll probably see that higher up. Alright, so here's that other adit. That's where we were just looking out of. Oh wow. Yet another bottle. It's a jar. And this is made by Hazel Atlas Glass Company. You can see a little HA on the top there. I don't know if it has a date code, but probably dates to right around the Probably 30s, I would guess. Look at that right there. We got a can. And another piece off a of dynamite box. Another Hercules. Kind of read that one a little bit better. Let's see how far this one goes. Yeah, just looks like it ends. Yeah, pretty much collapsed. There's actually a little gap there, but obviously not big enough to squeeze through, so that's the end of this one. All right, so I made it to the top of the ridge. <laughs> we are really, really high up here at least 6,000 feet and standing on a pod right now 
if I had a guess, mine itself is right over here. Got some old metal over here. Very, very dark colored ore that are getting out of here. Alright, let's head in here. See where this goes. So this pops up to the surface. Continues off this way very short. It's about five feet. The drift off to the left is about four feet tall. So this one just faces. Oh man, and I'm assuming this one also ends. Alright, so this is probably the last mine for the day. It's uh, starting to get pretty dark. And I don't know if it's going to storm tonight, but once we're done with this one, we'll uh, head back to the cabin. There's a piece of hand steel. Definitely indicative of a one-man operation. Yeah, some of this ore they're getting out of here though. So the main commodities that they're getting out of this mine was uh, lead and silver. But yeah, it's very reddish in color. Beautiful stuff. Don't think this is gonna go too far. Yep, that looks like the end of it right here. Yeah, super nice and red. All right, time to head back to the cabin and uh, have some supper. Oh man, that feels good. <laughs> Super cold outside. All right, boiling some water for my food in this uh, blue enamel wire coffee pot. I have a feeling it's gonna work pretty good. All right, water's done. Stir it real good, and then wait a couple minutes. There we go. All right, so I waited five minutes, stirred it again, waited another four minutes, and this is what it looks like. So this is the biscuits and gravy meal from Mountain House. It smells good as hell. Yeah, let's take a taste. You can see it's still steaming. Mmm. That is so good. 
after a long day like today. Wow. All right, guys, time to say goodbye to the cabins. Uh, right now it's 6.30 in the morning and the sun's about to come up in about 20 minutes. But yeah, super duper cold morning. It's gotta be in the 30s right now. And it actually snowed just an immeasurable amount but you can see that the floor is barely white there's a lot there's more here but on this on the side of this cabin you can see in the grooves that I caught some of those little pellets so I guess I can say I was up here when it snowed probably the first of the season Oh, but it's it's really cold up here uh, But I'm gonna be headed More that direction And check out some more of the mines and then I'll uh, be headed out of here All right guys, so we're a good bit further up the canyon and look at what we got here So right in front of me we got an Orban Quite the waste rock pile and over here to the left, you got that metal chute. Let's go check out that ore bin real quick. Oh man. What a, what a trek this is. Not only I get to the cabin, but this, this mine's even further up. <clears throat> oh, and you could tell that this is really old look at all those riveted pipes this is definitely an early 1900s operation right here and first coming upon it i was like is that a cabin just because of the the metal siding on it but Obviously, it's an Orban. Yeah, you can see all the frost pellets on the ground. It's still cold as hell up here. Wow, just look at that. It's a one shooter. Pretty tall. Way above it looks like there's even like skip car tracks that's insane yeah we'll definitely check that out going up there but yeah just a lot of uh, random odds and ends in the canyon lots of wood lots of metal but yeah let's uh, go head above this ore bin All right, here's a super sick side shot of this Orban. Just amazing. And like I said, that inclined tramway is right above it, right there. You actually got one of the wooden supports. And then just above it, there's still remnants of the rail. So I'll go check that out right now. So this is how far above the ore bin I am right now. It's definitely getting smaller. And the inclined tramway continues on above me. You can almost see the tracks right there. But I actually spotted a portal just to the left right here. So we'll carefully make our way across this very treacherous train oh yeah there's the first portal of the day Ooh, it looks like it's decently big all right let me get my headlamp and let's head in there
All right, let's head in here. Who knows the last time someone's been in this one? Actually, looks like it just faces right there. Oh my gosh, it is so warm in here. Oh, probably 50 degrees compared to the 30 something degrees it is outside. Alright, let's uh, head up higher up the mountain, check out the other ones. Alright guys, look at this insane inclined tramway. It's at least at a 40-45 degree angle. Just imagine this thing being a roller coaster ride. Oh my gosh. And it actually looks like there's a trestle going across here. So we're almost there. But the way this system would have worked is they would have had an ore car going across the trestle. And it would have dumped the ore into either a skip car or ore car. And that car would have been hoisted up and down via cable. Then it would have went down this inclined tramway all the way down to the ore bin. Would have dumped into the ore bin. From the ore bin, then a truck would come up, get the ore, bring it all the way down to one of the processing plants. Not sure where the mill for this mine was, but probably find it later. But uh, yeah, let's head up there. I'm very excited to see that trestle and the top shot of that uh, tramway. All right guys, so I made it to the top of this inclined tramway. And apparently, they definitely did use the ore car because the rail literally comes straight out of the mine and goes all the way down there. So they didn't have a skip car or anything. And of course, this trestle right here, that was used for the waste rock. So all that rock right below it, obviously not the good stuff. All the good stuff went down this way. And lo and behold, the engine and hoist, and even the cable, is still up here. Here's a look at the hoist. And here is a look at this engine. Looks to be a very small engine. I don't even think it's a four cylinder. Wow, a two-cylinder engine. Very small. I'm pretty sure this is the fuel tank. Also very small. Oh, this fan still turns. Still got the headers, spark plugs, pretty much everything. Wow. Not sure what this doodad is. Sure looks interesting, huh? Oh man. What a spot for mine. Yeah, there's a portal back there. And there's yet another opening right there. Kinda tempted to walk across this. Although the planks are almost non-existent. Could walk along the side of it though. Huh. What an awesome, awesome spot. I am just so, I'm so humbled to be here. Oh, this is beautiful. All right, and right now we'll be checking out the mine. Oh wow, and it's still got the rail in there. All right guys, let's head into here. As you can see, still got the rail. 
would be super amazing if the uh, war car was still in here. Especially considering how remote this spot is. It's a little stoked that section. Huh, looks like it continues off that way, but we'll check that out after this uh, main haulage. Wow, that's crazy. The rail. Go down there, there's a little decline. That's very interesting. Yeah, we'll check that out later. But walking across these uh, planks on this false floor. Already a really interesting mine. Oh wow, even got a manually right here. Well, looks like we got some motor, motor oil cans down here too. Oh man. And another set of ladders down here. <sighs> Oh, that sucks. Looks like it collapsed right here. Although, oh no, no, it didn't collapse. It's just all the rock that came down from here. Oh, wow. Pretty sure this is the uh, big opening that we've seen a little bit higher up the mountain. I feel like I should check this out first. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, let's head up here and then uh, we'll check out some of the other spots in this mine. All right, so that's where I just climbed up from. And here is this big old open stope pops out to the surface but this is crazy interesting because there's some skip car track that go right here and go down into this shaft this shaft goes down looks like a good probably a hundred feet can't see the bottom Ladders are pretty decent too. Kind of thinking about going down there. But there's just so much more to this mine. There's there's a drift that goes off that way. This connects to where I was looking up on that lower level. And then looks like there's a drift that goes off that way. And yeah, just a bunch of interesting openings. But uh, yeah, probably planning on going down this. All right, so there's looking up where I just came down. I went down about probably 25 feet. And then the shaft continues down, maybe another, say another 25, 30 feet. Yeah, I guess it wasn't a hundred feet. Really wasn't that far, but yeah, probably about maybe a sixty foot shaft. So I'm gonna head down there. Uh but we'll check out some of this stuff first. Got a couple cardboard dynamite boxes. Got a Hercules and a Trojan. Looks like a pack rat nest. Made their home in there. And then, looks like this pops out to the surface. There's a portal right here. Uh, 
Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> we actually popped out on the other side of the mountain. That's where I just was. And where I was exploring yesterday was that pile right over there. Huh. That's a crazy loop. All right, so uh, let's go down that shaft to see what we could see. Here's looking all the way up the shaft. Made it to the bottom. And we're on another drift. And these really cool artifacts. Got a 76 oil can or lubricant can. Got an RPM gear lubricant. So these are both gear cans. Can almost read that one. But look at that one. Puritan oil. For salads and cooking. Huh. Ooh, really nice color. RPM motor oil. These are very common. I find a lot of these in the mines. But yeah, very nice colors on that one. So I got a Folgers coffee right here. And it looks like you yet another RPM motor oil. Read it. It's like it says Atlas Permagard Antifreeze. Pretty sure I've found something like that before. Of course, got this war shoot right here. Let's check out so this way. A couple more cardboard dynamite boxes. And yeah, it's just faces. Hercules. Any dynamite? Nope. Just pack rat's nest. And let's uh, check out over this way. What's over here? Looks like we got a riveted accumulator. That's what that is. Another ore shoot. There's a cool box. Looks like it says Boyson Pants. 100% pure. Huh. I didn't know pants used to come in uh, boxes like that. Oh, and you, you guys remember that decline from that level that we started on. This is where it ends up. So honestly, it keeps going on there. There's a, actually a ladder right there. But I'm kind of running out of time. I need to hike back before, before dark. But um, what I'm thinking is checking out the upper levels, especially that open stope. So uh, let's head up there right now. All right, guys, I think I'm going to call it quits now. Uh, there's obviously some sections of this mine that I have not hit, but you know what? That just warrants another uh, trip out here. And I am not against that because this is one of the most scenic and one of the most amazingly intact mine sites that I've ever been to. So this was a really awesome two day trip. Um, thank you guys for uh, tuning into this one. Uh, it'll probably be a, a long 50, maybe even an hour long video, but 
Yeah, I think it's worth watching. But uh, yeah, that's the end of this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.